Alright, this is a video to try and de demonstrate some proper methods of soldering because I know a lot of people seem to have problems with soldering. Uh, this is something I've been doing since I was a, a child and it seems to be second nature to me so I'm going to try and demonstrate this as well as I can. Um, I've got a fan running here in the background for two reasons. One, because uh, the fumes that come off soldering can be toxic. There is lead, uh, which is a neurotoxin. And the second reason is because I just knocked over a bottle of solvent down here and uh, I really want to get rid of the fumes in here before it starts affecting me in a very bad way. So, the first thing we need to do is strip the wire. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. The easiest way is one of these uh, simple strippers you can get pretty much anywhere. Any tool store is going to have these. You simply put the wire in the stripper at whatever length you want and away you go. Now you have the copper end that's been stripped, you can see there. And I'm going to do the same thing, you just cut the little piece off here. Now when it comes to stripping, I seem to, uh, I kind of eschew the use of the strip, the actual strippers there and I use just diagonal cutters just because I've been using this for years and I'm, uh, this is a technique that has taken years and years of, of use. Normally diagonal cutters just cut off the wire. If you squeeze it, it, it cuts off. But if you have done this for enough years, you can get a feel for exactly how much you have to push into the insulation. And simply just by pushing, you can strip off the insulation like that. Um, if you don't do it right, it actually will cut some of that wire off in there, and that's what you know don't want to happen, but in my case, I, I, I've been doing this long enough, I know exactly how to do it. So, for this um, joint here between these two wires, the first thing we want to do is make sure that these two uh, ends are going to be about the same length, and they are not, so I'm just going to strip a little bit more off this one here, so we get about the same length. So it's, it's fairly close. Um, so. There's two different ways we can do this joint. One is where you just simply twist it together and you have both wires going off the other way like that. Um, the more useful way is when we're going to be putting the two wires end to end like this. Um, and there's what's called a Western Union joint that is uh, an old fashioned method of, of making a, a solder joint like this that will never come apart. We're not going to bother with that. We're going to do sort of a simplified Western Union joint. And the way I do that is I start off by having the wires crossed right about the middle like that and then just start twisting one side around and the other side around so the secret is that you, you need a, a pretty decent mechanical connection between the two wires so that's kind of the secret you don't want to rely on the solder to hold the wires together the wires should be able to hold themselves together on their own um, the, the solder is not meant to be a mechanical connection between the wires. The solder is simply meant to fill in the voids between the two wires so that there's no oxygen getting in there to, ox to um, oxidize the connection and cause uh, problems in the future. Uh, of course, the, the, the solder does add a little bit to the uh, uh, mechanical strength of the connection. So I'm just going to stick this in my little third hand here and that just kind of holds the wire in place. Um, now I have a soldering iron here that uh, this is kind of a professional soldering iron um, and I can adjust the temperature of this soldering iron fairly exactly. I've got it set for um, about 800 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, you could use a, a smaller, just a simple $10 soldering iron from Radio Shack. You can use a, uh, for larger wires, you can use a soldering gun, like a, a Weller gun, like a 140 watt soldering gun does well. Uh, you, you want to have the tip of the soldering iron fairly clean. Uh, I've got, there's a few different ways of doing that. You can have a wet sponge. I prefer this, uh, I don't know, it's like a brass uh, sponge. And you just push the tip in there a couple times you'll see the tip comes out nice and shiny and clean. Um, and if I leave it sitting out hot like this for more than a minute or so, it's going to oxidize and turn dull again. So I'll want to do that again so, uh, before I start soldering. The solder we're going to use is rosin core. You do not want to use acid core solder. That's for plumbers. 
using acid core solder on an electrical connection will cause the electrical connection to fail. So no acid core solder. Now, if you notice, a lot of um, soldering instructions, you'll see, say, heat the wire and then add the solder to the wire. Well, I can do that all day long. You can see the solder is not going to melt. So my technique is to place uh, sorry, the other thing you, you, do, you don't want to do is, is uh, put the solder onto the soldering iron and get a great big glob of solder on there and then try to get that go on the wire because that's not going to work uh, for the main reason being that the rosin is what gets the solder to flow into the joint. And if you're just globbing it onto the tip of the soldering iron, that rosin is being burned away. You can see that's what causes the smoke there. That's the rosin burning away. And if that rosin is burned away, there's nothing left to help it flow into the joint. So let's try again. This time, what I'm going to do, um, and you saw before where I put the the soldering iron onto the wire, and I put the the uh, the solder on the wire, and you can see even though there's your know, copper wire conducts heat quite well, it doesn't conduct it well enough to get that solder to melt. What we want to do is I'm going to put the soldering the tip of the soldering iron on the wire, and I'm going to touch the solder to the to the soldering iron just to get it starting to melt and that's going to get sucked right into that wire and because the the liquefied or the melted solder conducts heat better than anything else uh, and because it's already flowing throughout the copper it will then allow us to drag the solder along the wire and it will just suck it right up inside that wire so let's let's do that now we'll get a look at it so here I'm going to put the soldering tip of the soldering iron on the wire touch the solder to the wire now onto the wire itself so it starts melting and as you can see I'm just dragging it along the wire and it's sucking the solder right into the wire once I'm done let it cool and solder does does tend to cool very quickly you can see I can take it out here and I can hold it in my fingers already um, so if we have a, a close look at that if I can get it to focus in that you can see the solder is now sucked in that entire joint and it's it's a good mechanical joint you can't pull it apart um, you can't really bend it uh, and that's that's a quality solder joint that's uh, never going to oxidize it's, you're never going never to have problems with that solder joint there so uh, I, another way of doing this I'm going to cut myself another uh, couple bare pieces of wire that we can solder together this is a method that I use in emergencies. So in my motorcycle, I you don't have an electric soldering iron. Now you can get uh, butane powered soldering irons where you have um, it's you know runs off lighter fluid and it then heats up the tip of the soldering iron. And that's a perfectly usable example or, or tool. You can use that quite well. So I'm going to make this joint again here. Put this in the wire. So we have our mechanical joint there. So the, the tool I carry along with me in my motorcycle that I use for emergencies is actually just a butene torch. And this is, you can get these off of Amazon for 10 bucks. I mean, there's not much to it. You can, they get quite hot. Um, and all you do is you just open the, the cover like that and strike it. And I don't know if you can't see the, the flame. If I turn this light off, you can see the flame. There's a, a blue flame there. Yeah, you can see that just the edge there. So, the problem with this is it gets extremely hot, and if you get the solder near it, it will actually melt the solder in midair, as you can see here. So I'm not even close to the wire, and that's just, ooh, I just singed the hair on my finger. That's another problem. Uh, the third problem is it is an open flame. You do not want to be doing this anywhere near your gas tank. Um, or anywhere near this fuel. So you do keep that in mind. This is kind of an emergency thing. Lastly, the, uh, the, where the flame comes out, the little orifice in there, um, it will get clogged with solder. If you, so when you're soldering with this thing, you don't want to set this underneath the wire and then try to solder on top because the solder will drip down in there, clog the port, and your torch will be useless. And I'm, you don't have to ask me how I know this because I know this from experience. So, uh, what we're going to do, same type of solder. I'm going to very quickly uh, heat up the wire with the butane torch and then 
I'm going to use the solder on the wire, but I don't want to have the solder at the same place as the flame because the flame will melt the solder before it actually gets to the wire. So I want to heat the wire, move along, and then just follow along with the solder. Uh, you also want to make sure that you don't melt the insulation with the torch because it will do that as well. So this is kind of a, a little tricky deal here, but let's see if I can get this to happen on here. So I'm heating the wire, and if I get it going here, oh, my flame's gone out tough to do with this bright light. I can't see where the flame is. Okay, so I'm going to heat my wire. And again, I can't see what I'm doing here. Okay, so that's a bit of a mess and I'm trying to do this around the camera here where I can't see the flame, so it's tough. But you can see um, it has actually sucked the solder into the joint. I've got a little bead of solder there. It's not the, the nicest thing because I'm, uh, I'm doing this on camera and <laughs> I'm trying to do it with my eyes shut almost because I can't see the flame. So, uh, but you get the idea. This is for an emergency purposes. It, this will serve the, the purpose of making an emergency joint when you're stuck out somewhere and you, you don't have any other way of, of uh, fixing the problem. So that's it. Uh, we have our, our, our normal method of using a uh, the soldering iron where you're going to heat the uh, wire, start the uh, solder on just by touching the tip of the soldering iron and then once that happens it's going to suck the solder into the wire and then you can just move the solder along the wire to, to uh, suck that solder in as you go. And then we have our emergency method with the butane torch and again you can use a soldering iron, in, uh, sorry, a soldering gun rather than a soldering iron. Um, it doesn't have quite as fine a tip. It uh, it's puts out a, a lot more heat and it's a lot less controllable, but again, it, uh, it works for larger joints. And I should mention, this is very fine wire. This is, uh, I think, about a 20 or 22 gauge wire here. And the thicker the wire, the more heat you need. So if I'm soldering a 14 gauge wire, which I don't think I have an example of here. Let's see if this is, uh, yeah, this is a little thicker wire over here. So you can see this wire is quite a bit thicker. Um, if I'm going to be doing a solder joint, why don't I do one? Just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. You are going to need more heat. A what when you you can use a small wattage iron that you may get away with for doing 20 gauge wire. Uh, if you're working on 14 gauge wire, that little soldering low wattage soldering iron is not going to have sufficient heat in order to do a, a joint and if you do not have enough heat in order to complete the joint you're going to end up what's called a cold solder joint or you'll have a solder joint that's oxidized in, internally and uh, again that's bad news because it, it, it will fail um, at some point in the future. So here's my, uh, I believe this is 16 gauge wire here. So I'm twisting my joint together and here's my, my solid mechanical connection and I'll put that on there pull up my solder, clean my solder tip. Again, I'm going to do this, try to uh, do a little slower so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to start at this end, put the soldering iron on the joint itself, touch the solder to the iron, let the solder flow into the wire, and as you can see it's just flowing all the way along there. So now that whole joint is, is full of solder, and if you look all the way around, this solder all the way through it, there's no exposed copper anymore so it's not going to oxidize and that's it's a good solid joint. So there you go. Soldering, that's uh, soldering uh, one, two, three or, or uh, simple soldering. Um, keep in mind lead is a neurotoxin. This is a lead tin uh, solder. I know there are other solders that are non-lead, you know, the stuff they sell in California and that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't work as well. There's just nothing as good as good old 60-40 um, tin lead. So this is 60% tin, 40% lead. Uh, and it, this works better than anything else. And it's actually got, you can't see it, but inside, in the middle of it is, is where the rosin is. Um, so keep in mind, this does have lead in it. It's now on your, my fingers. Um, don't go eating a sandwich after you've handled this stuff. Go after you've done soldering, after you've handled solder with lead in it, go wash your hands well. Um, get the stuff off there. You don't want lead in your blood, in your body. It's, it's bad news. There you go. Soldering. Um, hope this has been of some help to you.